really affect my blood sugar so when I was pregnant and super hormonal my blood sugars would be going crazy for no reason and of course I wanted to eat everything bad that would make my blood sugars go crazy as well my doctor also changed my insulin because I was on Lantus which is totally okay in countries like Canada but here in Korea they don't let you use that medication when you're pregnant for some reason I also had really bad morning sickness and it was really just a hard time overall. So Tara was due actually on New Year's Eve of 2016 and she did not come out on her due date. She actually was in position and ready to come out three weeks before that and because of my diabetes they had told me that she would likely come early. So we were ready for a preemie baby. We were ready for her to come out. The doctor said she would likely come out before her due date, and she never came out. And her due date came, it was New Year's Eve. We were expecting that day to be the day she came out. She still didn't come out. So we went for a checkup a few days after that, and the doctor said that she was a good size, a little bit big, but we didn't want to wait too long for her to come out, so they were going to induce labor if she didn't come out a week after her due date. So on that day, I went to the hospital and they started to induce labor, but they did an ultrasound like a few days before that and so expected her to be that size. And what we didn't know at the time was that she had grown a lot in those few days, probably because of my diabetes, and she was a giant baby. When Tara was born, she was 4.2 kilos, which is almost 10 pounds. And I'm not a very, very big person, so it was a very strenuous birth. As well, I am allergic to most painkillers. So I had no painkillers, no medication. And I have Rh minus, I'm like A minus blood. And Tara has Rh positive blood. She's A positive because her daddy is O positive. So it was actually really dangerous and they didn't want to give me a C-section. And that blood is very rare. So ah, we did it all natural. I had a 30 hour labor with no painkillers. And for five hours of that, Tara was stuck in the birth canal area because she was too big. So it was really hell. It was really the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. I can't even, I can't even describe the pain. I passed out once. They had to give me the oxygen mask. And my husband's job was <laughs> like just to stand by my head and hold my head so I didn't pass out. And I vomited and it was just like really, really hard. I remember the doctor would come in, I think every 30 minutes and check and she kept saying like okay this is the time one last push like in the movie where they say like one big push and i did that for five hours <laughs> so yeah i really hated her and i i thought she didn't speak english so i said some like quite horrible things to her i cursed and afterwards found out that she does understand english so I guess she understands. She's an OBGYN. Actually, my main doctor, she was a surgeon. And I had a whole team of doctors because I was in kind of a critical situation there. So I had my doctor, 
who is the OBGYN surgeon, and then there was, I think, four other doctors and a huge team of nurses, and they took shifts, so they kept like taking turns. And when it was finally time that they said they had to take Tara out because we couldn't wait anymore, um, my doctor literally jumped on my belly and pushed out. I think she used her leg to like push on my belly. And she would be yelling at people like, what are you doing? So she would be running around pushing and then going to my lady parts. And eventually they had to like cut me four ways, which is kind of gross, sorry, TMI. And pull her out like a suction thing on her head. And it, they actually had to break her bone. So her collarbone broke. And she, when she came out, it was really hard for me because... I expected, like in the movies, you hear the baby crying, you get to hold your baby, but no, they just, it was silent, and they just rushed her away, and I, my husband was like, are you okay, are you okay, and I said, like, just go be with her, be with our baby, so they left, and I was there alone, and they actually had to do a surgery on me as well, so I had surgery, and I was awake for that surgery with no painkillers, and anyways, they did that pretty quickly. I was fine. But Tara, my baby, went to the NICU and I didn't get to see her. Tara actually pooed while she was in distress, while she was stuck in me. She ate some of it. So after Tara came out, I was in pretty bad condition. So I had to go to a recovery area. And Tara was in the NICU. So I did not get to even see my baby for a whole day after she was born. And when I finally did see her, she was in an incubator. And it was actually kind of funny in the NICU because Tara was quite healthy actually, and she was really big. And all the other babies in the NICU were preemies. So um, Tara looked really out of place. And I couldn't even touch her the first time I saw her. And that was really the hardest part. I cried so much. It was really hard. Yeah. But we made it. We survived, and it was really, 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 really hard. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure if we have another child, <laughs> we learned a lot. So we'll know for next time. I blog. I wrote a blog about this on my WordPress blog. I'll put a link in the comments. And if you have any questions or want to know anything else, let me know. This was my first story time, so if you're interested, comment questions and I can tell you more stories about my life. Hey Tara, come here. Can you say goodbye? Bye bye. It's a hoji. Nice. <laughs>